Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the UKV have a look at the precipitation and the temperature as we've generally got flip-flopping temperatures over the next five days and we do have on and off precipitation as well most uh, likely in the north and the west but areas of precipitation and showers will drift further southwards and, and eastwards at times we then have a look at the mid to long range looking at the gfs gm eastern wf and the ensembles this does look fairly unsettled over the next couple of weeks and it does look generally below average in terms of upper air temperatures but the reason why it's below average in terms of upper air temperatures is because towards the middle of the month within the next week or so the jet stream is going to become more amplified now the latest models uh, or recent models and ensemble members have put us on the colder side of the jet however we're seeing signs today from the gfs and the eastern blf for perhaps day 10 after it goes briefly colder than average we could actually see a real warm spell an indian summer like pattern now there is a bit of controversy when you can call an indian summer but if it is coming in the middle to end of october um seeing temperatures into the mid 20s perhaps i'm pretty sure that is uh sort of uh, get across most people's definition of an indian summer uh, but definitely the gfs the east and the today they are outliers in terms of the ensembles but they're both showing southerly winds because the jet stream amplifies and dips out the atlantic heads north northwards again over the UK dragging up air from the mid-Atlantic perhaps 15 degree isotherm getting in which would give temperatures in the low 30s for in the summer months but because of course we are into the middle of autumn now could produce temperatures into the low to maybe even mid 20s 25 degrees is possible so we'll have to see what happens with that today uh, and we'll have a look what those charts are showing so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description now if you look on the live radar you can see we are on a bit of a lull between weather systems we do have a few showers around across northern england and scotland some cloud around as well but most areas are actually quite bright and not too bad in terms of the temperatures around average this time of year around the mid-teens mark a few spots could get up to 16 17 degrees uh, and i'm recording this around 4 p.m if we put on those uh, temperatures you can see they are not too bad today a lot of yellows and some blues further north it's in cooler air masses uh, where we're seeing temperatures perhaps down to more the low teens but for most of england wales into parts of ireland as well it is getting up towards the mid teens that sort of 14 to 16 degree mark perhaps slightly higher and they're going to be sort of chopping changing over the next few days some days could be only 12 or 13 degrees feeling quite cold and miserable other days could perk up to around 16 or 17 so if we do have a look at the ukv have a look at what it is showing for the next five days in terms of precipitation and temperature you can see over the course of today just a few showers pushing in but as we into tomorrow another weather front pushing in now predominantly this is going to drop a lot of its precipitation across scotland republic of ireland and northern ireland perhaps into northern england and wales as well but through sunday evening it will peter out as it spreads south and eastwards it could produce some thicker cloud and maybe some patchy rain into the mid uh, to early morning of Monday in the far southeast. And we're all into a fresher air mass, so it could be quite a chilly day through Monday with a blustery westerly wind, a few showers across Scotland as well. As we head into Tuesday, more precipitation pushing into Scotland and another weather front arrives into parts of Wednesday. And again, peters out as it moves southwards and eastwards, but giving some heavier precipitation in the north and the west. So you can hear it's not completely um, a washout, but areas in the north and west are going to see quite a bit of rain uh, especially into tomorrow and then most likely tuesday into wednesday and of course showers between that but there will be still plenty of dry weather especially in the south and the east where we will see the weather fronts move through we will see the transition in air masses but the uh, sort of boundary doesn't become uh, it becomes a little bit more mixed so that's why the weather front does peter out so we only see a bit of thicker cloud and maybe some lighter rain here or there so the south and the east although we'll see some cooler temperatures some rain some showers it won't be anywhere near as heavy as intense as it is further northwards and westwards now if we do put on the 850 hp temperatures you can see the transition in air masses you see at the moment we're in sort of an average to below average upper air temperatures uh, over the course of this afternoon uh, and that's why there's a little bit of a chilly feel out there but it's not actually too bad on the thermometer as we head through uh, into 
tomorrow you see a brief wedge of milder air so the south and east could be quite mild but look at that cold air behind it but that mix of air becomes a little less distinct as it spreads south and eastwards uh, and you can see um, that it's much colder in the north for monday but the south still hanging on to some milder air before into tuesday we're all into sort of mixed air masses so it could be quite mixed and into wednesday again another cold air front pushing in it's all because the jet stream is pretty much over the top of us so we've got these cold and warm air masses colliding it's in the next sort of week uh, or so after this towards the end of the working week where these air masses um collide less over the top of us and we start to sort of see us plunging into one or the other and the medium range um impact of this uh, stage looking likely we're going to be in the cold air mass with a dip in the jet stream but longer range from looking at the gfs and the eastern of in a minute it could put us back into the real warm air very warm upper air temperatures seen from some of these runs today so if you uh, actually have a look at the two meter temperatures to finish uh, from the UKV, you can see over the course of this afternoon temperatures peaking around that 15, 16 degree mark, as I said, and into tomorrow, upper air temperatures uh, are not too cold initially, um, but they will turn colder from the north and the west behind that weather front, but you can see overnight temperatures 7, 8 degrees and into the afternoon, it won't be again too bad, again maybe a degree or two higher, maybe 17 or 18 in the south, and into Monday, you can see those temperatures overnight quite cold and in the day not particularly mild at all peaking maybe 15 or 16 in london further north and westwards maybe only 12 or 13 so a much colder day there on monday and into tuesday could be quite uh cold temperatures overnight into tuesday morning maybe only two or three degrees for some and into the afternoon you see temperatures really struggling around that 13 to 15 degree mark quite widely and into wednesday again overnight temperatures quite chilly and into the afternoon maybe struggling to back towards 15 or 16 degrees so pretty chilly there indeed now if you go to the GFS now and have a look at what it's showing over the next couple of weeks, you can see the westerly phase at the moment. You can see that thicker black line between the low and the high is just basically over or close to the UK. And that's why we're seeing these alternating lows and highs over the next sort of five days or so. But it's in the longer term, you see that bit of blocking up towards Greenland. And what that does is bring in generally a northerly airflow in, uh, at least initially. But watch what happens here. The that dip in the jet starts to impact further westwards with the colder air plunging into the North Atlantic. And what happens to the UK? We see a southerly wind, a very warm southerly wind. And although it doesn't look spectacular, it is very warm for this time of year. Now, if you run it back and have a look at the air masses, this is the most important thing. If you look at the upper air temperatures, you can see we are seeing alternating colder and milder sectors at the moment in around a week's time. By next Friday or Saturday, we are generally in average to below average air masses. But it's beyond that, we start to really push up a real hot plume of air. 15 degree ice fur moves in, in just under two weeks time. And it goes very, very warm indeed before again, eventually getting swept away. Now, if we do actually have a look at this on the two meter scale um, down towards the surface, you can see afternoon temperatures in the mid 20s, maybe 21 or 22 degrees, maybe even slightly higher in a few spots. Incredibly warm. And again, the upper air temperatures peaking around 16 or 17 degrees. That's a proper summer air mass. Very, very hot indeed extremely surprised seeing that that's proper indian summer type pattern and if we go back out to the european outlook and put on the temperature deviation look at that 12 degrees above average incredibly warm uh yeah just absolutely ridiculous upper air temperatures there for that period so we'll have to see exactly what happens with that but in indian summer being shown on the gfs today now, if we do go over to the GEM, see how that does come out up to day 10. So we could see glimpses of an Indian summer if it does follow the GFS pattern. Again, you see westerly winds, lower pressure pushing in uh, continually. And we see that plunge of cold wear with the jet stream shifting further southwards. But no real signs of any high pressure building over towards Europe like the GFS does. And we stay generally on the colder side of the jet. So you can see we are generally in the blues for the foreseeable future. From sort of day five onwards to day 10 we're in the blues pretty much consistently so below average and that's what most of the ensemble members are showing with low pressure over the top of us and a lot of cooler than average air so cold miserable and unsettled but no sign of any indian summer type pattern perhaps though it does go uh, the gm would go for that in the longer term but we're not seeing that um, at the moment if you go over to the ecmwf see how that does compare again a westerly wind at the moment continued pattern of low pressure pushing in as we get to day seven we do see that cooler northerly flow 
But again, that low pressure sits out in the Atlantic and we draw up a southerly wind, a bit of a cut-off low out towards the Azores, perhaps. So a very, very weird pattern this, and this would bring up an incredibly hot air mass from the south. Uh, and again, you see 15 degree ice firm potentially pushing in the temperature deviation, getting up towards 10 degrees above average, would be incredibly warm once again again look at the united kingdom look uh, at midday we could be at 20 maybe 21 22 degrees or even higher in some localized areas incredibly warm from both the gfs and the G and the ecm at wf today very very interesting seeing these patterns again we'll look at the ensemble members in a second and you'll see they are both outliers but sometimes the operational ones to sort of lead us ahead and it's not an unusual pattern to see when we've got to these sorts of amplified jet streams we do generally see very very alternating air masses when we do have these sort of amplified conditions just recently in the last sort of five days or so most of the model output has produced that low pressure over the top of us with cold air feeding in with a warmer air pushing well to well 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 to our east all the way out towards eastern europe um, but today it is showing it over the top of us uh, and yeah it could be an indian summer type pattern it's really quite warm indeed now if you look at the e ensembles to finish the video look at the gfs and the ecmwf you can see generally around or below average over the next week or so little peaks above average whenever we see this brief milder spell before a cold front sweeps through but in the longer term you see we are generally around or below average most of the ensemble members are well below average some getting out to minus five age of gpa but a few runs going very hot and you can see the operational GFS today, the hottest of the bunch going well above 15 degrees at 850 HPA, incredibly hot. Precipitation does increase from most of the runs. So yeah, increase chance from the settled weather, especially in the south as that jet stream becomes more amplified. We're more likely to see those heavier bouts of precipitation hang on for the south and the east with them coming in from a slightly different angle, more from the south and the west. But very interesting seeing that GFS run and the control run, that thicker blue line there as well, um, going up towards a very warm air mass. Now, if we do look at the two meter temperatures, you can see the GFS operational on there peaking around 22 or maybe even higher than that um, locally. So, yeah, incredibly warm. And that would be a real Indian summer type pattern. And if we do compare it to the ECMWF ensembles, you can see once again around or below average over the next week or so. Some brief peaks above average where we see warmer air masses moving before cold fronts. And then we generally see we are around or below average, very similar to the GFS. But look at that peak from the ECMWF operational on the thicker green line there going well into indian summer type patterns getting close towards 13 14 maybe 15 degrees at 850 hpa flirting with the south and a few other runs going very warm as well so yeah very very interesting seeing that today um again it's not particularly unusual to see these sort of charts when we do have these sort of amplified jet streams but we haven't seen any of these in the past few days while this amplified jet stream pattern has come within the model out out output um and we are seeing both the ecmwf and the gfs latest runs showing that as well so perhaps could there be a model shift coming so yeah going temporarily more unsettled and colder for a few days before that blocking pattern actually produces a real warm hot southerly indian summer type pattern so yeah we'll have to keep an eye on that for the time being it's just two operational runs they can very quickly flip it'll be interesting to see what they're showing this time tomorrow if they do carry on with this and we do see some ensemble members support it there are a few supporters but nothing crazy uh, we would definitely say it's still outliers if we did see some support tomorrow then we could probably start talking about it being a real possibility so yeah we'll have to see exactly what happens with it if you're looking for some warmer weather then this would be a good situation last blast of heat perhaps for the next sort of six months until maybe april may time when we'll next see temperatures perhaps getting into the mid-20s so we'll have to see exactly what happens but for the time being it looks generally unsettled generally cooler than average but there are a glimmer of hope perhaps from these runs today perhaps seeing something warmer into the middle of the month whether it's dry is too um too impossible to say at the moment because if we are close to the lower pressure we could even see some heavy showers and thunderstorms mixed in with this sort of air mass but that is something that we'll focus on if this pattern does sort of uh, shore up within the medium time frame so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed we'll have to keep an eye on what's happening with this uh, and i'll see you again for another video soon